Okay, we're rolling. This is a home interview, Springwater, New York, 24th of August, 2005, approximately 10.45 a.m. Interviewers are Wayne Clark and Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, your date of birth, and place of birth, please? Uh, Robert E. Parker. Uh, date of birth and place uh, of birth? Uh, August 13th, 1922, Rochester, New York. Okay, just had a birthday. Yeah. All right. Um, what was your educational background prior to entering service? High school. Okay. Um, do you remember where you were and your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Well, I was working at Kodak. I just got out of high school. I was working at Kodak as a millwright's helper. And... Surprise, I guess I would say. Mm -hmm. But uh, I hear about it. And my brother was drafted. And I enlisted in uh, September of 42. And they called me up in uh, February of 1943. Why uh, did you select the. Did you enlist in the. Uh, Air Force itself, or did you? Yes. Why did you do that? Because I always wanted to try to fly. <laughs> you never had flown before that? No. no. Okay. No. Um, where did you go for your training? I was in the Southeast Training Command. Went down to uh, pre flight, was uh, Maxwell Field, Alabama. Primary was uh, Did you have a basic training first? Well, you, you have pre-flight, primary, basic, okay. advanced training. Pre-flight is your, uh, what the Army gets as a basic training. Mm -hmm. okay. So you get your uh, uh, military etiquette and all that sort of Marching stuff. and drilling and... Right, and pre-flight, that was at Maxwell Field. Okay. And uh, primary, where we started flying, was in... Uh, uh, what type of airplanes did you, did you fly? Well, we primary? started... Uh, primary, we started in uh, the PT-17 biplane. Mm -hmm. That was a uh, 225 horsepower engine. How, how did you like that plane? Very good. Very, it was very, a Stearman, right? Yeah, Stearman. Very very stable. Mm -hmm. It had a tendency, of the head narrow landing gear, it had a tendency to ground loop. That our instructors always taught us how to pull out of it. But, uh, it was a very stable airplane. Uh -huh. Is that what you soloed in? Yeah, well, we. You had a solo <coughs> each each place you were. Okay. You soloed in your uh, primary, then you go into basic, went into the BT-13, which is the Volt. -E. That was a 450 horsepower engine. That was a well, it was double seater like the front and back. Mm -hmm. And you had a solo in that. Then I went into the advanced trainer, which was an AT-10. That was a uh, twin-engine aircraft. And you had a solo in that. And then you graduate from that, and then I got put on uh, out at Salt Lake City. They uh, had a, I don't know what you call it, a staging area or what, but it was put on a, uh, Got a crew together. Then we went down to Pyro, uh, Texas. And we started flying the B 17 down there. That's where I learned to fly the B 17. Mm -hmm. and that was just. I don't know if we had an instructor pilot. The pilot of the crew, I was put on the crew as a co pilot. And uh, just learned to fly from him. Mm -hmm. 
And then we, uh, after that, uh, they figured we were ready. We went up to Lincoln, Nebraska, picked up a brand new B-17, and uh, flew that over to uh, England, Nuts Corners, Ireland. And the first six missions I flew was out of England. Now your crew, you all stayed together then from that point on? Yeah. From we got put together in uh, Salt Lake City, we were right together all the time. Mm -hmm. Now when you uh, went over to England and started flying your missions, did you keep the same plane all the time? or No. no. Did you ever get to name a plane? No. No, I wasn't that fortunate. <laughs> did you ever decorate your jackets at all? Yeah, I had a... Uh, yeah, I still got my jacket down cellar. And it's uh, kind of mildewed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had a... Uh, well, when we got transferred, our crew got transferred down to Italy, we got, had a rest leave out, out on the Isle of Capri. And I had that oh, nice looking girl put on the back, mm -hmm. back of my jacket. Now, did you... Was that girl on the airplane too, or? No. Okay. Um, just on my jacket. Okay. <laughs> but did you uh, paint a bomb on for each mission? Did you, did you ever do that too, or? I don't know what they done because, as I say, we didn't. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't. Well, I mean, under your jacket. Oh. Some no. painted them on their jackets. It was just. No. Mm -hmm. Now, who did the painting? Someone did that for you. That was on base. Some. Or? No, there was some. Uh, Italian artist on the island of Capri that done it. Right. But I had to do it. But uh, yeah, we flew six missions out of England, and our crew got trans. Well, our last missions was uh, day before D Day. I think it was. We flew two of them out of England, bombed the coast of all back some of the gun installations mm -hmm. in the back of France there, back on the coast. Did you run into any opposition at all? Just a lot of flack. Mm -hmm. I would call getting attacked by fighters that day. So how many missions did you fly out of England? Six. So most of them were uh, like support missions or in preparation for D-Day or? Now you always flew B-17s? Yeah, uh, here we are. Uh, let's see. Flew Brussels, Karlsruhe, Konigsborn, Syracourt, Bologna, Conscious. Second of June it was. What well, was the sixth of June? Was the invasion? Right? Yes. Yes. It was the second of June they flew. Were they long missions? Uh, Four hours, fifty-five, and six hours. I thought they was on the coast of France. Hmm. 
it could have been that much. So June the second was the last mission you flew out of England. Yeah. But it shows I got credit for two missions in each one of those. See, down in Italy there, out of England you got 25 sorties. <clears throat> down in Italy you got, uh, you fly above a certain, what is it, parallel? You got credit for two missions. Below that you get credit for one. So first you were with the 8th Air Force in England, and then when you went to Italy, you were with the 15th? Right. right. Okay. See, I flew actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay. 20, <coughs> 29 trips I made. Now, were you ever escorted uh, by the Tuskegee Airmen? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep, they were uh, down in Italy, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were good outfitting. And, uh, <clears throat> it was hard sometimes to distinguish the, the 51, the ME-109, if they're coming in head, in, head mm -hmm. on, you know. Now, where, where were most of your missions when you went out of Italy? Um, where were they too? Yes. I say most of them was the Blackhammer Oil Refinery. Uh, okay, yeah, 55. Up in Germany. I got, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven there. It's a black hammer. How many times did you fly into Puesti? Just once, 23rd yeah. of June. Now you mentioned you crash landed three times. Was it? <laughs> do you do you want to tell about the circumstances or what happened? Or? Well, <clears throat> the first one, as I say, was uh, we ran out of gas, mm -hmm. and uh, and about. Well, I'd say maybe four, I, I can't remember correctly, maybe four or five days, PBY came mm -hmm. and picked us up. Now, could you tell us where, where did you crash land? I know you told us off camera, but did you could you describe the landing or you described it's it a, before? It's, uh, it was on the island of, it's either this or Veer, I can't remember which. And we tried to land on the water to go up to shore to lose speed so we wouldn't hit one of these stone fences. And uh, we kind of overshot because we only had two engines already run out of gas. We were flying on two, two engines and we couldn't uh, really get power to go around and we didn't know how much fuel was left. So we hit the fence and uh, naturally that stopped us pretty good. And let's see, the other one was... Uh, <laughs> now how, you said you were, was any of your crew members you said were killed on that? Uh? There was two. Mm -hmm. Two were uh, Killed and uh, uh, three, three got hurt. Mm -hmm. Two or two or three. And uh, the 
partisans uh, hit us out in the fence, and the Germans must have come over the, from the island that night because we heard a lot of shooting around. Now, did you have to destroy your airplane at all? Did you set it on fire or just left it? Well, we tried, but there was no fuel in it. Uh -huh. And uh, we uh, took a berry pistol and tried to uh, set it on fire, but mm -hmm. it didn't work. How did how was the the, the PBY uh, contacted that you were there? there well, the this, radios I, this island where they had uh, their kind of headquarters. Mm -hmm. I think they had a radio. I'll sweep your butt off when you get up. You're on camera, dear. <laughs> they uh, uh, they had a must have had a radio there. Mm -hmm their headquarters, mm -hmm. and they contacted uh, uh, whoever they contacted mm -hmm. in Italy. Okay, so what happened your second time? <laughs> <laughs> second time, uh, we got a, they had a brand new B-17 they wanted test hopped. So, we were doing it, uh, test hopping it, so then we started screwing around. <laughs> and uh, we uh, was flying formation with a P-38 on the water and flew him almost into a spear of land coming up. Got him mad at us. And then we buzzed the English bivouac area on the shore, went up this valley, and we were climbing. We were just about ready to hit the top when we downdraft. Set us down, our left wing caught the tops of some pine trees and went around the side of the mountain. <laughs> Needless to say, it ruined the airplane, and uh, I got a court martial in there I, I can show you, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> was anybody injured at all? No, no. Nobody was injured. Ruined, <laughs> ruined the airplane, though. No. <laughs> okay. And then there was one more time? Well, this was on, uh, when I got back from overseas. Uh, I was in the ferrying division. And uh, this guy was uh, a flight officer. He was a, used to be when they had flying sergeants. Mm -hmm. And he had some like 15,000 hours flying time. He had a, it was an old, he said it was an old RA-37 twin engine Ventura bomber. And we were ferrying it from uh, I think it was Reading, Pennsylvania, down to uh, New Mexico. And when we got down there to lower the gear, uh, one gear didn't appear down and locked. So he told me, and I was going along as co-pilot. Now, I don't know why, because they only had one set of controls, and I'm sitting here in this empty way that goes down into the nose, doing nothing. But he says, this lever, I pump it, you know, hydraulic to pump the gear down. So I'm pumping, and I look up here, and pump all this hydraulic fluid is pumping out, and I tell me all the fluid's pumping out. So he flies by the tower, and they, they said it appears to be down and locked. So we come in, and he lands, that was the right gear, so he lands mostly on the left. And we go, and when we lose flying speed, of course, it settles. And that right gear gives out, and we go down the runway. <laughs> that was my third one. <coughs> Did it destroy the airplane? Or just prying uh, it pretty, up? Pretty much. Yeah. That, that was an air, I don't know why the, 
I don't know what they were using it for. I think it was just storage or something they were going to fly it down there for. Uh -huh. What would you say was uh, one, of your, one of your most harrowing missions? For which mission or missions stand out more than others? Besides the one you crashed on. something I'd never done before. But one of them, we went to the uh, north, they had two oil refineries up in Blackhammer. We went to the north one. And this uh, officer that was leading us flew over the south one first. We caught all the flack from that. So we were up about it was 28 to 30,000 feet. He makes a big 360 degree turn to go over uh, north. Well, geez, doing that at that altitude, the goddamn planes are strewn out all over. I mean, we couldn't keep up with them. A lot of them couldn't keep up with them. It was a hell of a mission. And the uh, fighters were really jumped in on the sun. Do you know why he ever did something like that? Because he picked the wrong one. Oh, oh, he went in. He went in on south. And he oh, was okay. Then he, the he realized he was wrong. <clears throat> but why the hell he didn't go in on the hell with the north? Go bomb the south one. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. Well, I was only a second lieutenant. He was a colonel. What am I going to do? <laughs> then the other one was... Uh, After I, uh, oh yeah, I got another one too. After I, uh, I'll tell the other one first. We went on this mission once, and the pilot, I'm not going to name names. The pilot always had a habit, when I was flying, crossbar here where the rudder pedals and that are, He'd have his feet up on there when I'm flying, you know. Well, right above the right foot is a switch for the alarm bell. And all of a sudden, I'm from the bombardier, I get a call. I want to know what's the matter. I said, nothing, why? He says, the alarm bell's on. So we're up at the altitude, and I'm uh, pointing and doing this, you know, to shut it off. And... Uh, he doesn't know what I'm talking so I finally take my oxygen mask off and holler at him to shut the alarm bell off. By the time he'd done it, two guys had bailed out. Uh -huh. And uh, when we got back for debriefing, he tried to tell the debriefer that I told him to turn it on. Well, if I was going to get another court martial, well, that should have been there because I called him every name in the book. And I'd Bombardier, I had said, what did you tell me, Bill? He says, well, I told you that the alarm bell was on. And I said, yes, and that's the first I knew it. So after that, why? He said, well, the two guys at the Plessy, they were at the Plessy uh, prisoner war camp there. Mm -hmm. They had one. Well, I guess after Plessy uh, uh, got... You liberated them? They were liberated. So, uh, those guys came back, and they were coming back through. Well, before they came back through, they sent sent him home. So that, I got checked out as first pilot then. And then this other incident was when I was first pilot. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever been in the 17 or... Yeah, I've been in the 17. All right, the ball turret. Mm -hmm. All right, they crank it up, and the guy gets in it from mm -hmm. inside. Then he controls it from inside electrically. Well, <clears throat> when he gets out, 
You're supposed to be able to crank it so the guns are pointing straight back. They aren't straight down. When he gets out inside, the guns are pointing straight down. So then he cranks it so the point so he can land. It. Mm -hmm. Well, this time that when he got out, they couldn't crank it, so the guns were pointing back. So I told him to get the wrench, and I said, "Undo it and drop it." Well, they couldn't find a wrench, and they couldn't do it. So I asked the ball turret gunner. I says, "I says I can do it." I said, "Do you want to land in it?" And he did so. He got in it, landed, so the guns kept the guns like this. And I landed it with him in the ball turret. <laughs> and the ground crew, when he opened the door and fell out backwards there, <laughs> kind of shit the pants. <laughs> that was the one that was kind of exciting. It was a good thing that landing gear didn't collapse on that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what were your relations like with the uh, people in England or in, in Italy? Did you have much contact with the local people? Just in nightlife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was, yeah. We went. Uh, I think the best place I went was uh, on the Isle of Capri. It was a beautiful place. And we took a trip into that uh, blue grotto mm -hmm. they have underneath the island there. Beautiful. Yeah, I have no problem with them. Mm -hmm. Was there a lot of drinking on, on your off time? Did a lot of guys drink and, you know, to kind of uh, take the edge I didn't, off? I didn't do much in England, but down in Italy they had a squadron uh, officers club. We go there. Tip a few, mm -hmm. but they mostly had brandy. And I didn't like it at first, but you know, all you got when you. Well, in fact, in Italy, when I first got there, the officers were allowed to, to get a bottle of whiskey a month. And the enlisted men were, I think, allowed a six pack of beer a month. Well, I got one bottle of whiskey. And then they cut off the whiskey, gave the beer to the officers, and the enlisted men didn't get nothing. So this uh, bombardier and I, we'd save up our beer, and we'd sneak over to the enlistment's tent with our beer and play poker. And when the guards come around, why we had a couple guys there that we hide under the tents and guys would take our place at the poker table. <laughs> we shared our beer with them. Did you get to see any USO shows or any forms of entertainment like that? The only one I saw was down in uh, Alabama. I saw the Bob Hope show down there. Mm -hmm. But overseas I didn't... Uh, I don't recall seeing any. Okay. Do you wear your flak jacket on most of your flights? Oh, yeah. yeah. How about any sidearms? Did you carry any sidearms at all? Yeah. 45. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Now, where, where do you think you encountered the, the most flak? In, in what raids, do you recall? I think it's... Uh, seems to me that when uh, Munich and uh, Marshland Yards, most, they had the flat guns set up on flat cars, mm -hmm. and if you're breaking away, uh, you know, following a, a railroad, they would go with you. But they would, at, uh, Munich would seem to be, it's usually the Martian Arts we got there, and that, that was heavy, black clouds. How about being under attack by aircraft, were you ever? Uh, a few.
few times, but uh, the only one that was, I, I forget what rate it was on, one of them, there was two of them that went up ahead of us and came right head on to us, you know, and you can see the lead net, which is their wind, <laughs> flash and fire, mm -hmm. but you don't know whether they're shooting at you or the next plane or mm -hmm. who, you know. Uh, it wasn't. We saw a lot of uh, dog fights going on up near where our fighters would uh, uh, get them. Did you ever encounter a jet? Saw one. Did you? The, near the end there. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't actually see the jet. I saw the contrail from it. You could tell because Jesus, he was uh, going up as fast as the planes were going. You know, they died. Mm -hmm. Man, it's a good thing they didn't have those in the beginning. Did you ever, uh, your plane ever get much uh, damage, go back with much damage? Yeah, there was one time we come back, they counted 365 holes. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and one of them was right through a... Number two engine went through a cylinder head, and I didn't even notice any change in the engine, temperature, or mm -hmm. oil pressure, or anything. But the uh, ground mechanic said it all right through one of the cylinder heads. You must have liked the B-17. Very much, very much. Did you ever get a chance to fly a 24? Uh, I acted as co-pilot one once when I was in the fairing division, mm -hmm. but I didn't like the third thing was about this big round and you push it in and out where the 17 had a, you know, like this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the elevators and I didn't like that pushing in and out mm -hmm. thing. Hey, um, yeah. when did you finally end up going back home? Oh, February. Oh, February in 45. So, why, when did you fi decide that you wanted to stay in the... Uh, Air Force. Well, every time they came out with one of these things, uh, uh, they, uh, oh, I don't know what the hell they call it. They want to know if you, how long you want to stay or something. Mm -hmm. I always put down indefinite, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came out one time for. Uh, I think you had to have a 4.0 efficiency rating. I had a 3.9, so I didn't make it. Now, did you, you didn't get called up for Korea or anything? <coughs> I volunteered for it. Uh -huh. I was, uh, I think I was, at that time I was a captain in the reserves, and I told him I'd take a one reduction in rank. And I think at that time uh, Mitchell Air Force Base, New York. Mm -hmm. I think that was the headquarters at one time where I had a right to. But I still maintain when I was in uh, Texas getting through there was another Robert E. Parker down there from Chicago. I got a couple letters from his girlfriend. And when I wrote that thing back in, you know, to volunteer to go in, uh, I often wonder if <laughs> they did not call me a man. Because <laughs> at that time, well, I'd flown C-54s. After I got out, I was in that uh, 
what they call it, the Crescent Caravan. We used to fly from the States over to Paris and Casablanca, and then they had a, another group that went further on. This was back in the So you were, when you were in the reserves, you were based out of Fort Niagara, or I mean Niagara Falls Air Force Base? Well, that's the only one I, the only one I belong to. So how long were you there? Then? Until 98, or um, 68? You want anything you want to talk about during your time in the reserves? Well, that 51 scared the shit out of me, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I scared her too. You want to tell us about that? <laughs> I was up flying and uh, we lived up in the city then and uh, she was out uh, with a, uh, her son was little then so I was up about 3,000 feet and I was going to buzz him I thought I was back far enough to make a dive and buzz him but I kept going to keep seeing. I kept going down, down, down. All of, all of a sudden, I thought I could see the dust in her eyeballs. <laughs> I, I pulled up, and the guy, when I came home that night, the guy next door, he came over and he, sh he sh held it. He said he sh I shook his chimney and everything else. I was low. Yeah, that was a P 51? Scared, scared the shit out of me. I went back up and flew right straight back to Niagara Falls. <laughs> It's a nice airplane, but uh, I wasn't a fighter pilot. I, I, I want I want more than one engine on an airplane. <laughs> so you you retired in '68 uh, as lieutenant colonel then. I know, you know, I, I saw here, it said you, you wrote that down on your form here. <clears throat> I think my son wrote it down, I didn't. Oh, okay, your son. I got it someplace. Most of your duties while you were in the reserves. Just uh, the flying. Uh, mm -hmm. They uh, made me a flight leader because I was a captain at that time. there one weekend a month and you have two weeks in the summertime active duty uh, before that started uh, I had two weeks up in the city there before I got into that I was uh, or something. I don't know. So were, were you ever like the company commander or anything? Yeah. No. <laughs> Not me. Did you ever make use of the GI Bill? Yeah. I went to the RBI for two years. 
on the GI Bill. Took up uh, business administration in the county. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Did you buy a home with the GI Bill? Uh, I, I got that reduction of taxes. Okay. But I didn't. Uh, I didn't get any uh, uh, a loan or anything. No. Okay. No. Did you ever uh, join any veterans organizations? American Legion was mm -hmm. one. Springwater American Legion. Okay. Um, did you ever stay in contact with? Anyone that served with you? No. Oh, I heard uh, from uh, our uh, sergeant at flight crew chief once. But no, I never. Uh, how, do you, how do you think your time in the service changed or had an effect on your life? Made me enjoy it more. Uh, I don't know. Think you would have ever had an opportunity to travel like you did? No. You never, probably never would have learned to fly if it wasn't for the service, right? Right. right. Never would have. Never would have flown. No. Okay. okay um, I guess maybe if you could go over there and talk about some of your medals and things and point some of the things out to Wayne, he'll focus on that. Some or if you want to talk from there. Some of them, I don't even know what the hell they are. Some, got, some of them are just uh, like state ribbons and that. On the left there is uh, DFC, the Distinguished Flying Cross, and then the Air Medal. Yep. And I see that's, uh, I'm sure if that's a World War II victory or victory in Europe. Uh, now, when was that photograph taken? <laughs> Must have been when I was in cadets. Had to be in, uh, 43, I would say. See what's on the collar, I can tell you. Yeah, that's when I was in cadets. Now, what is that patch at the bottom? This here? Yes. That's the 97th Bomb Group patch. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, okay. well, it's a patch of the 97th Bomb Group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, thank that, you. Uh, well, that yellow, that yellow in there, I don't know. That's a American theater, European theater. Okay. Now, let me ask you something. Is there any chance of us seeing that uh, flight jacket of yours? We'd like to get a picture of that. Someone donate one to our museum, but it's not uh, painted. Just the jacket itself. Oh yeah. So this was a, an artist in Italy that painted this for you. Yeah. Did okay. a nice job. Can you spin it around? Yeah. See the front of it? It's the old, uh, get a shot of the label. Okay. All right. Okay, great. <laughs>